welcome to the Witch's Cauldron. My name's Paula. What I want to talk to you to, about today is art magic. And you're probably thinking, Paula, I can't even draw a stick figure. What the hell are you talking to me this about this? I am not talking about, you know, being Picasso. Though if you are, you know, extremely talented and you can paint and you can draw and you have that talent bravo i'm not one of those people um i can give it a fair shake and a fair shot and i can come up with some good stuff every once in a while but i am by no means an accomplished artist what i'm talking about is incorporating your passion for creation and creativity into your magic and vice versa so let's say let me let me come up with a few ways that you can do art magic you can draw a mandala let's say if you and mandalas are like sacred geometry you don't have to be, you know, a master drawer to come up with some very beautiful um, mandalas. Think about the shapes that you're drawing in your mandala. And also think about the colors that you're going to be using and what they mean to you. Okay? You can always put that mandala in your book of shadows and incorporate it and write on the back what everything means to you and what this mandala's purpose is and if it turns out really great you know what put a frame on that boy bad boy and hang it on the wall let it work its magic for you all the time okay let's say you're into pottery make your own chalice Paint it, fire it, decorate it the way you want. Make your own scrying balls. Make your own offering plates for cakes and ale. It's, it is absolutely, perfectly appropriate. Let's say you can't throw a, a goblet or anything like that, but let's say you like to paint on glass. Get you a plain goblet from, you know, the dollar store or wherever and get some glass paint, decorate the outside, and create your own chalice for your altar. Let's say you love the look of tattoos. Well, you can paint your body. Let's say do henna tattoos. You can use body paints to paint sigils and protective symbols on your body, healing symbols on your body, and incorporate, incorporate that into your rituals and your spell work, right? You can create henna tattoos that match the intent of the ritual for the sabbat that you're doing. It's only, it's only limited by your imagination. Let's say you're into photography. Well, guess what? What do you think about trying to do spirit photography? Go out with a night vision camera with infrared and, you know, start out at maybe a cemetery or something like that, or even volunteer your services to a paranormal team in your area. You can also take pictures of nature that speak to you let's say a particular flower brings you joy we'll go out and take you pictures of those flowers when they're in bloom and then pick the very best one and have it blown up and frame it and hang it in your home that love that you put into taking that picture translates because it puts a smile on your face when you remember what you did to pick that flower 
to take the picture, the day, what it was like. Is it a, a sunny photograph? Did you take it in the rain? Was it snow? What was going on? And it brings all those memories back. Let's say you're gifted with calligraphy. Then I bet you could have the most beautiful book of shadows and grimoires and journals anywhere around. And you could do decorative writing, something akin to what's in the book of Kells. So think about that. Let's say you're an artist and you like charcoal drawing. Did you know that charcoal is great for banishing stuff? So think about that. Charcoal, draw a representation of something or a bad habit that you want gone from your life. Okay? When you're done with it, the trick is you have to burn it to release that bad habit to the universe and have it, the universe take it away from you. So you can't get too attached to your drawings when you're doing them for banishing. Let's see. Oh, maybe you're into mosaics. Make your own altar tile using your mosaic techniques to create it. Make sure you pick colors that mean something to you. Document the whole process in your Book of Shadows. Let's talk about natural art. Go out and forage for your art materials. You can use grapevines and willows to make reeds. Better yet, they're really easy to bend and make pentacles out of them and then decorate the pentacle for the ritual or the sabbat that you're doing and decorate them with all natural materials like herbs, flowers, um, use uh, secure things to the pentacle using things like cotton threads or uh, raffia or even using resin based glues. Don't use hot glue but use like a resin, tree resin based glue. They used to make, uh, what was it, mucilage, I think is what it was called when I was a kid. Um, you can make your own, you know, like flower paste and use it as paste. And usually what I do is make these pentacles and I forage for things that will mean something for that sabbat and especially um, I end up leaving it out um, for, you know, the little critters to eat what's on it, or I burn it as part of my ritual, um, for that Sabbat, especially the fire rituals. You can also use natural art to, like, incorporate in your grimoire, you know, examples of the flowers and herbs, you know, um, my little herbal grimoire, I have an example of not only a picture of what that looks like in the wild, but I also have a little, you know, baggie attached that has what it's like when it's dry in my herbal grimoire. So that I then go and I can recognize things by looking at it and know what that herb is or that plant is without having to go and research it. Think about gemstones and doing jewelry making. And you can make jewelry with like wire and use the metal that you use, um, you know, with the appropriate correspondences. You can also incorporate gemstones into macrame jewelry. You know, think about the type of knots that you're using. How many knots do you put, you know, in between each stone? How many, you know, you use your numerology, your basic knowledge of knots and the incorporation of it, um, the gemstones, and you can also, um, your thread, you can, you know, of course, make sure that it's color safe. You can um, spray it down with some of your, you know, essential oils and stuff and incorporate that or anoint um, the thread before you start with your essential oil. You can 
e they even make coloring books for those of us who can't draw a straight line. You can incorporate, they have books of tarot cards, they have gods and goddesses, they have mystical animals, they even have grimoires. They have things about the Sabbats and the Esbots and the god and the goddess and the Wiccan Reed and all kinds of stuff in these coloring books that then you put your effort, your vision, your creativity into and you color those pages and you can put those in your book of shadows. If you are someone who can uh, draw, let's say you're doing something for healing chakras, okay, and you're going to do it on a canvas, you can put sigils on the canvas um, and draw them on there and then paint over them so that the sigils are incorporated in there. You can add a little bit of essential oils to your paints that you're using or your inks that you're using. Um, you can enchant, like I have enchanted um, my spoons and different things for kitchen witchery. You can enchant your tools, like your pencils and your paint brushes and um, anything like that. I have enchanted my crochet needles. So you can enchant your tools that you use to further the magic that's going to be contained in them. You can, in, if your creativity lies in like needle and yarn arts, um, and this would include, you know, big, bigger scale macrame or weaving or crochet or knit or embroidery or cross stitch, any of those needle arts. Think about the color combinations. Think about who you're making the item for. Think about what intent you want to imbue in that item. Do you want a hat to have healing properties? Do you want to have a, a sweater that's protective? Do you want um, an afghan that makes someone feel um, ne to absorb negative energy and provide them comfort and help them through an anxiety attack. Um, I have done shawls corresponding to um, chakras for a friend of mine that, you know, she has a real problem with her, her root chakra. And I did a shawl for her. So whenever she's having that anxiety off the chain and that fight or flight reaction is kicking in, she grabs that shawl and it immediately starts calming her down because I am I imbued the the thread that I used. Every stitch that I made, I thought about what was going on and what I wanted it to do, the color choices that I made. The type of thread that I used, I used a cotton-based thread and natural fab and natural threads to do it. So think about stuff like that. You can also find your creative outlet in um, soap making or candle making, and you can make your own candles for um, your rituals or your spell work. For soap making, you can make your own soap for like full moon rituals or for general cleansing and protection or for keeping you grounded. You are only limited by your imagination and your desire to create. You can even incorporate your magic into the written word. You can use your words. If your creative outlet is writing and writing poems, incorporate that creativity into writing your rituals. Keep a journal. Keep a book of your poems. A friend of mine did that. And you know what? She ended up getting a book of her poems published. How awesome is that? So think about what your creative outlets are. And then really think about how you can incorporate everything that you have learned to this point about color, about intent, 
about herbs, about woods, about gemstones and crystals and essential oils and everything else that we've talked about and how you can incorporate those theories into your favorite creative outlet. And you know what? You will end up enjoying your creative outlet even more and you're going to become an even more powerful witch in the process. Because why? Because you are the source of inspiration and you are the source of the power. And you are the one who harnesses the power of the universe and the power of the items that you use to create an item for a specific intent. Okay? Remember that, my friends. And with that, that's it for this video. If you liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It does help me. And leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite way to create things and how you think you could incorporate magic into it. What's your favorite hobby, in other words? Let me know in the comments. If you would, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Uh, only about 30% of you uh, that watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. So I would appreciate the subscribe. Also, a lot of creators, people are telling me that they're um, being unsubscribed and they didn't unsubscribe. So please just double check and make sure if you had sub subscribed to the channel, just double check and make sure that you are still subscribed and make sure you click the notification bell to know when I upload another video. So with that, my friends, as I always say, merry we did meet, merry we will part until we merry meet again. Be well and walk in love and light, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.